just to obey any man that comes along. I, I believe in women being strong, uh, godly women. They can be feminine, of course I desire that, but women, women are supposed to be strong and uh, as a godly woman. And I think it's helpful if a woman can have dignity and bearing and modesty and deserves the respect of every man. And so husbands and wives, we're supposed to submit to the Lord and we're supposed to submit one to another. I'm going to be reading about that in just a moment. I'm not making it up. So submission does not imply inferiority. That's not what that means. The Greek word is a military word. It refers to being under authority. Under authority. In the military, everybody has got assignments, responsibilities. Uh, the same in the paramilitary. If you're in a fire in a fire department organization, everybody has responsibilities to one another because it's a team. You got every member has a role on the team. Same in law enforcement as it is in the military. And in a home, every member of the home has responsibilities to one another. If we do all of our jobs, everything gets done. So the reason for this is found in verse 18 in our text today. And verse 18 says. Wives, submit yourselves unto your husbands as it is fit in the Lord. Something that Pastor Kirk said last night, which I thought was, was really terrific. We do a lot of uh, counseling as a pastor, and over the years I've done, met with many, many couples, uh, helping them prepare for marriage, and then dealing with the aftermath. Uh, <laughs> and sometimes things didn't work out the way that it was supposed to be working out. So when it didn't work out the way it's supposed to be working out, they come to see the pastor. And uh, they want help in communication. They want help with parenting. They want help with their finances. They want help with, and you can go on and on and on with all the different ways in which we're supposed to work together as a husband and a wife. The problem is this. If your relationship with God isn't right, it is not possible to have a healthy relationship with a husband and wife and or with uh, uh, parents and children uh, or with other people. Our relationship with God has to be right first. When our relationship with God's right first, then all the other relationships fall in line. Respect. If a wife harps on the husband and constantly points out to him every single thing that he did wrong. If she belittles him, if she talks him down in front of other people, it is death. If the wife is either quiet or builds up her husband privately and even occasionally builds him up to others that he knows. It is huge. Because men, despite all the macho stuff, a lot of times men are not that secure in themselves. And when a man feels respected, it lifts him up and enables him to reach his fullest potential. Okay? I hope that's clear. So, by being respectful and loving and submitting ourselves to one another, you can make relationships work, okay? We'll go to the next scripture. First Corinthians 13, it's one very familiar. Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity is another word for love. Uh, charity envy is not. Charity bondeth not itself. That means does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, and thinketh no evil. When you love people, you just deal with it. You love people more importantly than always having your own way. You love people more, more than just getting to have what you want to have. 
And, and you don't need to puff yourself up and be arrogant and prideful. You just, in humility, be there for one another, okay? A happy marriage is not automatic. We are naturally self-centered. Does that shock you? We are naturally self-centered. One woman complained that her uh, to her marriage counselor that when her husband won a trip for two to Hawaii, he went twice. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you call self-centered. You know, it's like I could understand why he did, but I, I but, but I think it's a really bad idea, guys. Just to take her along. Second one. Second point. Uh, making parent-child relationships work. I'm talking about making relationships work. We've been talking about husbands and wives, but a lot of times when people get married, not always, but sometimes when they get married, they have children. And when they have children, they're a very important part of a family, and they're a very important part of making things work, having a, having a healthy home. So it says, children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing unto the Lord. When children obey their parents, it helps the parents to feel loved by their children. When the children are asked to do something and the children don't get it done, you know, take out the trash, 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 and the trash doesn't get taken out. It could be anything, anything you ask, could you help with the dishes tonight? You know, mom hurt her hand, she was cutting, cut her hand tonight, and and it hurts to use a dishwasher, would you just go wash the dishes for us? And then the kids get up and say, yes, yes, dad, yes, mom, and they go and do it. It really makes you feel respected and it makes you feel loved just to have kids that are willing to help. If the kids are like, no, I don't feel like doing it tonight. No, I got a video game I got to do. No, I got to go to this, you know. It's like, you, you're really, it's like, eh. <laughs> yeah, so. It helps a lot in parent-child relationships so children will learn to be respectful of their parents, but I'm going to tell you that starts from the parents down. The parents have to train their children to feel loved, appreciated, valued in the home. When a child obeys his or her parents, the Lord is pleased. Exodus 20 verse 12. Boy, I'm having a problem today. I need to go forward. There we go. It says, Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. There's uh, times when dads can really upset the whole apple cart in the house. We can provoke children by things like calling them names, belittling them. Uh, it hurts kids a lot, it scars them for a, a lot of their life if you don't treat them with dignity and with respect. Fathers have a big responsibility, I'm, I, I, I'm telling you. Children look to dad, even granddad. I'm a granddad now. And I've got grandchildren that look to me for wise counsel, which is a huge responsibility, very humbling, when a grandchild calls and wants to have, you know, what do you think I should do about this relationship or that or whatever? Well, that is a, that's a responsibility uh, to do that. But it says, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. Instead, what we need to do is encourage, edify, teach. Sometimes we need to confront. We may not always agree with what somebody's doing. But when you speak the, speak, speak the truth and speak it with love to other people. So don't provoke children. Don't kind of like annoy them by things that you say. Don't make, ever make fun of children. Don't ever be disrespect, disrespectful to children. They mostly need a lot of encouragement. His responsibility was to get the local people to do certain jobs. And he was frustrated because they would only work while he was there watching them. And so when he left, they'd stop working, they'd just sit around. So he had a glass eye. So one day his eye was irritating him and he took it out and set this glass eye on the stump and forgot about it. He went away to do something else and when he came back, everybody was still working. He said, why are you still working? He said, your eye's looking at it. <laughs> and I'm 